Welcome, everyone. My name is Mike Hockley, and I'm the co-chair of the Overland Park Chamber's Public Policy and Advocacy Committee. I'd like to welcome you and everyone that's on the, on the call to the Johnson County Public Policy Council's Candidate Forum. And this is a forum for the Kansas House District 16, which includes parts of Lenexa and Overland Park. Uh, joining me today are Linda Featherstone, uh, the candidate for, uh, the de Democrat candidate for District 16, and Richard Young, the Republican candidate. The Johnson County Public Policy Council is comprised of 10 chambers of commerce serving the Johnson County uh, community. It was developed, we've developed today's questions focusing on business and community issues. We'll start with brief opening statements followed by question and answer. At the conclusion of the forum, each candidate will have time to make a closing statement. Because of time constraints and the constraints of the format, we will not have questions from the audience. We'll alternate which candidate answers first, and before we went live, we conducted a coin toss to see who would start. And Linda Featherstone was the lucky winner. She picked heads, as most people always pick heads, and 50% of the time, that's right. Um, and so we'll uh, ask Linda to start with her opening statement. Linda? Thank you. I'd like to thank the Overland Park and Lenexa Chambers for having us here today. And before we continue, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the day. I will never forget September 11th, 2001, and the worry of spending the morning trying to reach my sister. I'm sure she will never forget walking past the smoldering Pentagon on her way home that afternoon. I would also like to acknowledge those who have lost someone to COVID-19 and our frontline workers. As Mike said, I'm Linda Featherston. I'm a lifelong Kansan, the daughter of retired Kansas State employees, a piano teacher, and a mom who wants to make our community better for my kids and yours. I was a Girl Scout leader for a decade and volunteered for the Shawnee Mission Schools throughout my girls' time there. I'm the mom that went on the field trips and baked the cookies. I currently serve the Kansas and Kansas City Music Teachers Associations, the Wick Garden, Be Smart, and my church. I'm proud to say my campaign raised over $800 for harvesters this spring. I thought I would continue as a core member of Cindy Holster's team this year, but after many requests, I'm now the leader of the Featherston for Kansas team. I attended Kansas public schools from kindergarten through graduate school and have degrees in music education and music history. In my piano studio, I work with kids from public, private, and home schools, and I've seen kids from all of these settings benefit from public school services. I am 100% committed to preserving the public safety net for all children. Besides our schools, the issue that finally pushed me to run is Medicaid expansion. We've already sent over $4 billion of our tax dollars to other states, and we absolutely cannot send another dollar out the door. We need our tax dollars here in Kansas, creating jobs and providing access to affordable and appropriate health care. I'm both a teacher and a small business owner, and I know what it is to build a business from the ground up and to be responsible for every last detail of that business. I'm running for the Kansas House because it's the right thing to do. Our district has shown that they want a common sense representative that is unencumbered by outside interests. We don't have time to watch legislators stare each other down over extremist positions. We need legislators that will work together to get things done. Thank you, Linda. Now let's turn to Richard Young, and uh, it's, you can give your uh, opening statement now, Richard. Absolutely. Hey, first and foremost, thank you all for having me here today. <clears throat> it is an absolute honor. Um, it's a blessing to be in the position I am today. Um, I love Kansas. I've been in this district for almost a decade. I went to Johnson County Community College. Um, I liked it so much, I stayed a third year. Um, I played basketball and ran track there. Um, but my time at Johnson County Community College was a rough start. Um, my freshman year into the community college, um, you know, I couldn't read flat out. Um, I had educators who came alongside me um, that loved on me, fed me. Um, I had um, a basketball coach who never gave up on me. Um, coming from a rough background, um, poverty, if you will, I know what it's like to be um, in a position to watch your parents struggle. Um, Mom used to boil water on the stove. Um, dump it in a bathtub and we'd wait for it to cool off after eight siblings and um, you know why are we lighting candles again and I know what it's like to be that kid in class um, hungry um, you know and not able to focus and so I'm very grateful for educators um, in Johnson County 
the church community in Johnson County that invested so much in me um, and got me to a point to where I would go on to get a bachelor's degree in legal studies minor in criminal justice. Um, I've collaborated with prosecutors and lawmakers on shaping the state on both prison reform um, and just different innovative creative ways to keep people coming back to Kansas. And so I am very, very grateful to be here. My time served as a youth minister and as an advocate in the community um, has just been an absolute blessing. I'm excited to get back. Um, too often, um, professional politicians are playing the partisan game down in Topeka. They're forgetting about our kids, forgetting about us, that real lives are impacted. And so I'm excited to go down and represent District 16 in Topeka, reach across party lines, and uh, get some things done. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we're going to proceed with our questions and answers. And as I, as I said before, these, these have been uh, prepared by the, uh, the Public Policy Council uh, and are intended to, to cover a broad spectrum of things. The questions have not been provided to the candidates ahead of time. Um, we'll start with you, Richard. Mm -hmm. As a candidate, what are your top three policy issues? Absolutely. So creating jobs is my number one priority. Um, getting behind small business owners, rebuilding the local economy, um, and then making sure education is adequately funding. Um, our kids are everything. You know, being someone who's been in these school districts, have worked with the parents, um, we need to make sure that our kids have all the resources they need to be successful. Same question to you, Linda. What are your top three policy issues? My top three policy issues are fully funding education, expanding Medicaid, and working across the aisle to move our state forward. Thank you. This could, this could get pretty easy. You guys have good, short, succinct, concise answers. Um, so now, Linda, it's back to you. How would you propose to balance, this is a multi-pronged question, so don't start before I finish. Okay. How would you propose to balance the state budget and what specific budget cuts would you support and what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? Well, we all know the legislature is gonna face some very tough decisions in January. Our economy has taken a hit this year and we're gonna to need to work hard to keep our economy strong and build it forward. I would support cuts where we find we could be more efficient. I think one of the things we might have learned from the pandemic is that paying for office space is no longer efficient, that our workers work great at home and that that could save us some officing costs for the state. I know the docking building is in poor shape. My parents worked there forever. Maybe we stop piecing together the docking building. As far as revenue enhancements, the number one thing we can do is expand Medicaid. It'll be bring hundreds of thousands of dollars to our economy and it will create jobs. The other thing I think we can look at is expanding our tax brackets. Under our current system, a full-time minimum wage worker is already in our second tax bracket and then we cut off at $60,000 is the highest tax bracket. So I think we can look at another bracket on the higher end that is well above where the middle class would fall that could expand our revenue. Okay, I'll repeat the question for you, Richard, just to make sure you, you've got it. How would you propose to balance the state budget and what specific budget cuts would you support and what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? Absolutely. Look, we're, we need to get down to Topeka. We need to, once we get to the state house, we need to let the dust settle. Um, we do not know what type of budget we're gonna be looking at. We do know we're gonna be short. We do know there's gonna be a deficit. Um, Obviously, the COVID-19 drastically impacted our community. I've spoken to the local barber on 119th. I've spoken to a lot of business owners who are now closed. Revo Coffee Shop that was on the north side, um, now closed. And so we really need to make sure we are not increasing the burden on families and small businesses. We need to keep them first. We need to hold the line. Um, and we need to make assessments once we get there. And we can actually make an accurate judgment on what needs to happen with the budget. Okay, now it's back to you, Richard. What would you do to grow and develop the state's workforce? Absolutely. Um, being at Johnson County Community College, I think one of the greatest things was to look around and see, hey, 
not everybody here is transferring to a four-year college. You've got guys, I could be one day sitting next to a guy, a part of the railroad program, the next day one a part of the IT community, a welder, um, and you never know, a culinary arts degree. And so I think we need to go ahead and we need to incentivize um, and create more opportunities for folks to go and use their skills here in our local economies here in the state of Kansas. Um, I know at um, the Kansas State Treasurer's Office where I work as the outreach director, I've focused and we have built a program called Scholarship um, and we've encouraged kids, hey, there's funding there that can provide other ways of, um, of gaining skills and entering the workforce. So definitely um, am excited to go down to Topeka and be innovative and creative um, about motivating our, our students because they are the future of our workforce here in Kansas. Okay, it's back to you, Linda. What would you do to grow and develop the state's workforce? Before COVID-19 struck, we did not graduate enough workers from our colleges and universities here in Kansas to fill our workforce requirements. We need to find ways to control the cost of college tuition so we don't see our best and brightest students going to other states. My own children had plenty of classmates that headed off to out-of-state universities because they could go there cheaper than they could go to our own Kansas colleges. The other thing, we are so blessed to have Johnson County Community College right here in District 16. Our, our high school students can take advantage of earning college credit for free. While in high school, our homeschool students can take advantage of that also before they turn 18 to earn that dual credit. And the technical programs they have at Johnson County Community College are amazing. That lead kids directly to high paying careers that are stable and always in need. We need to support our education, especially at the university and community college level. And then of course, we need to be supporting our K through 12 public education that prepares our children adequately to join the workforce, to seek technical education or to seek a university education. Thank you. All right, um, Linda, it will be your turn now. What are your views on K-12 public education funding? Well, I'm a teacher, although I teach at home in my independent piano studio, I do consider our teachers among my brethren and my colleagues. Um, my children, as I said, they attended a grade school that's five houses from my house. And I've seen that grade school enhance my neighborhood. We've had a turnover on my block of initial residents to now new families and that's especially what we can use in the Shawnee Mission District are those new families moving in to revitalize our school and our economy here. I am a hundred percent in support of fully funding our schools and I don't mean the bare minimum level I mean the level it takes at which every child to succeed from our at-risk preschoolers to our general population preschool, to our special ed services. We cannot leave our special services behind for our exceptional children. Our grade school is the special ed center for Shawnee Mission, and my children were so blessed to grow up with special ed students beside them every day in the classroom. It really taught us a respect for each other and the value of each other. So I will support our public schools from day one, 100%. I'm endorsed by Education First Shawnee Mission, the Kansas National Education Association, and Stand Up Blue Valley, and I value those endorsements, and I value our schools. Richard, what are your views on K through 12 public education funding? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, being a young man that was that at-risk at risk kid that struggled with reading and writing, that dealt with a lot of trauma coming up, education is the number one priority of mine. Um, I've spent over the last almost decade here in Kansas time in the Blue Valley School District, Shiny Mission School District, Olathe, mentoring as a youth minister, as a mentor, literacy aid. Um, I've done a lot. I've worked with a lot of these kids on a lot of different issues. Um, I plan to fully fund education. Um, I stand behind our teachers and our students. Um, I think from hearing at the doors, a big issue is making sure the funds are allocated properly, right? So making sure the funds reach the classrooms and they meet, reach the teachers and the students. And so I'm very excited. I love the youth here. I've invested a lot into them and will continue to do that. Um, and hopefully I get a chance to sit on the K-12 Education Committee. 
Thank you. All right. Um, it's back to you, Richard. Uh, what types of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? Absolutely. So I think we need reasonable regulations. Um, I think we need reasonable regulations. And oftentimes, some of the, the regulations can stifle um, and business owners from growing and encourage them. I think we have um, a ton of regulations. I think we have a ton in state, uh, state statute that protects these people. Um, I think right now what we need to do is we need to focus on um, how to incentivize and get business owners to start businesses um, without interrupting um, some of the things that they want to do that helps the local economy grow. All right, Linda, what types of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? As the school system is the largest economic stimulus program in Kansas, I support, as I said, fully funding our public schools, including our trade schools, community colleges, and universities. Fully funding these schools create a well-prepared and well-educated workforce which benefits business. Those public schools also draw in businesses to move here. When our public school quality lags, people don't want to be, be here and they don't want to start their new business here. Um, additionally, I do support Medicaid expansion so that we can help support our businesses, especially our um, service industries, our building industries. Those are all stabilized by Medicaid expansion. Um, I support incentivizing businesses to invest in new technology, be that green technology for building or public transportation systems, things where we can say to business, let us help you be creative, let us help you look for new ways to build our economy, to create jobs, and to draw business here to uh, the Johnson County area. Thank you. Okay, Linda, it's back to you again. What are your views on state tax policy? And please be as specific as you can. The state taxes need to be balanced between sales, property, and income tax. We need to have that three-legged stool balance between our revenue sources. The Brownback experiment showed us that when we rely too heavily on the first two, it creates an imbalance that just doesn't work. Kansas needs to adjust our current tax system so that we can add that extra bracket at the top without burdening the middle class with unreasonable taxes. Um, we need to have a stable tax system and a stable budget system so that our businesses know what to expect, so that our communities know what to expect, and we can plan for our future moving forward here in Johnson County and in Kansas. Thank you. Richard, what are your views on state tax policy? And please be as specific as you can. Yes, so um, obviously we need to adequately fund schools and roads, but in general, I think businesses and families right now are taxed quite a bit. I mean, you've got federal tax, you've got state tax, um, county, local, I mean, layer upon layer. Um, I truly believe we need to hold the line right now in a time where our state is in an economic crisis, if you will, um, and we need to protect the families and the businesses um, at all costs right now. Okay, um, Rashard, this one will be to you to go first. What are your views on healthcare policy and Medicaid expansion? Absolutely. So again, being a kid that grew up on food stamps um, and welfare, I'm most certainly in support of government programs that give you a hand up, not a handout. Now, I think any government program needs to be fully and thoroughly vetted and thought through. Um, with that being said, my commitment to my community will always to be to fight for accessible and affordable health care um, at all costs, and that will never change. <clears throat> okay, um, Linda, what are your views on health care policy and Medicaid expansion? As I've said, I fully support Medicaid expansion. My husband works in an emergency room in an underserved area, and we see daily the impact of people not having access to appropriate and accessible 
healthcare. If you can't afford to go to, your, to a family physician or to have a family physician, you have to wait till you're in crisis and that's when you end up at the ER. Um, ER doctors are wonderful, I would have to say, but they are not trained to be your general practice healthcare provider. It's inefficient, it's expensive, and it costs the rest of us because the healthcare system then is not working as efficiently as it can. When we expand Medicaid, we'll create 13,000 jobs here in Kansas. We'll protect our rural hospitals, which is important to us in Johnson County, not only from the it's the right thing to do, but when rural hospitals close, those people come here to our hospitals. And we are so happy to treat them and be able to treat them, but our doctors are full. So we need to keep access in the rural communities. Expanding Medicaid will also provide access to 7,400 veterans and their family members who maybe can't access veterans care easily. It would also help control the cost of health insurance here in the state and the cost of care. Okay. All right, we have one last question before we go to your closing statements. And Linda, uh, you get this question first. Um, what do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? The thing that most distinguishes me from Mr. Young is that I am a lifelong Kansan who's lived here in Johnson County for 21 years. I chose to raise my family here in District 16 even though all our plans had been to return back to Manhattan. Um, I've been an active volunteer in my community at all levels, and I'm also a longtime volunteer in my profession. I truly believe if you're gonna be part of a community, you need to always give back to that community. I am a strong proponent of public education, and I am supported by people who support public education and not the diversion of funds to other entities. I am a teacher, and I see children from, well, preschool clear through high school. And I'm so blessed to watch them grow up and see what they experience on a daily basis. I know what it was when all those kids were sent home to learn at home. And I know how they felt scared. I know how their parents felt. And I have seen them flourish and do great things while they've been at home. And they're so excited to get back to school. But I see history through children's eyes and they're always my number one priority. Um, I would also say I'm a small business owner. I built my business from the ground up. I'm the only one that takes care of everything, the marketing, the building, the maintenance, the teaching, everything is my business. Thank you. Okay, Richard, this is the last question. And then uh, after that, you'll give your closing statement. So what do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Absolutely, Mike. My humble upbringing, um, coming from a place where we had nothing. We had nothing. We had to figure it out. We had to work after it. Um, being forced to grow up fast, like I kind of spoke about earlier, and the trauma that we faced as a family, I traced as a young, young guy. Um, my resilience of what I've had to go through and endure um, was a big, big piece um, of my life. I've already collaborated with Frank prosecutors, um, policymakers. Um, I know the process. Um, being at the Kansas State Treasurer's Office, I have already been on the forefront of not just um, efforts in the uh, education system, but working with kids to help prepare them and connect them to scholarships. Um, I know the burdens of the families. Um, being a mentor, not only just from an education standpoint, but from a personal standpoint, here in Johnson County, we have a suicide issue in our school district. Um, I've been on the forefronts of those battles. Um, I've helped the widow um, and I've gone above and beyond for this community over the last decade. And so um, I'm very excited for this opportunity to go down to Topeka and make a difference. But all in all, I think my um, resilience, I think my story, and I think the things that I've been through prepares me um, for this role down in Topeka where there will be a lot of pressure um, and a lot of um, hard things to face. And if you haven't faced those things before, you won't know how to get through. Okay, that ends the question and answer period. And uh, we're going to wrap up today's forum with closing statements. And um, due to the way the coin flip turned out, Richard, we're going to start with you. Absolutely. Um, I kind of touched on my story and where I come from and what I've been through. 
Um, I know what it's like to come from the family that doesn't have a lot. Um, I know there's families in, in our district right now that are feeling the weight of just job loss, um, the uncertainty of the school situation right now. Um, I will fight for this district, just like I fought for my life, I fought for my family. Um, a, a, a young man as, as my such as a young boy, I remember watching um, my sister being carried out on a stretcher. Um, I remember losing another sister to kidney failure in just this past year, um, lost a sister, um, rest in peace, Lana Young, um, who, who passed away due to an accident. Um, I've had to pick up my family. Um, I've had to pick up my community. I've had to set my own house in order before I went reorganizing the world. And so I definitely believe that through the trial, through the trauma, through the tribulation, just like America, we always come back on top. Um, and that's been my heart. Um, I love this district, not just for um, all that is given to me, um, but all the work that needs to be done. Um, when I'm on the front porch just canvassing and I'm hearing the moms and the dads uh, cry and talk about their stories and things that they're going through, they feel unheard. Um, it gets me fired up, you know, when I'm able to make a difference. And so I want to go down to Topeka. The partisan games have got to stop. The professional politicians have got to step aside. And it's time to get things done because real Kansans are hurting, real people are hurting, and they need help. Thank you, Richard. And Linda, your closing statement. Thank you. I would like to thank the Chambers again for having us here today and giving us this opportunity to speak. My family moved to Johnson County in 1999 so my husband could attend KU Med. We had two children under the age of two and I was faced with restarting my business in order to support our family. We literally couldn't afford to go McDonald's and I had to work my tail off to build up my studio to keep our family afloat. We always assumed we'd be moving back to Manhattan upon graduation. However, once we settled in District 16, just in time for our oldest daughter's chart kindergarten at the school at the top of our street, we never considered moving again. My love of my community has led me to leave my comfortable empty nest lifestyle in order to run for office. Lord knows I tried to find an excuse not to run. My studio, my desire to take on more, more volunteer opportunities, my identity as a teacher and a helper. As I was repeatedly asked to run, I thought of the fact that I'm my own boss and can arrange my own schedule. I thought about the fact that I could stay with my parents in Topeka if the weather was bad. Most of all, I thought of the 500,000 Kansas school children and the nearly 150,000 Kansas without access to affordable, appropriate health care. And I realized I could no longer sit idly by. I had no excuse to tell these children in hardworking Kansas that my comfort was more important than them. This office is not a stepping stone for me. I don't wanna be a politician when I grow up. I wanna be a piano teacher who looked for a place in the world where she could do the greatest good and headed to Topeka to speak up for her neighbors and those who couldn't speak for themselves. I don't have fancy lobbyist connections, but I've been through the District 16 18, eight times talking to people about their concerns. I have the best friends and neighbors who support me regardless of my political party or theirs. The life I've lived this last year is not one anyone would have imagined for me, but I am so proud to be running for this office on behalf of the families of District 16 and the people of Kansas. I truly believe that we are not as divided as it may seem. We can come together to talk things out and make Kansas a better place, and I can imagine no greater honor than to head home to Topeka in January on behalf of District 16 to be sworn in to be a state employee, just like my parents were. Thank you. Okay, I wanna thank you both. Uh, you both uh, did a great job, uh, gave great uh, and thoughtful answers. Uh, so that concludes today's forum for Kansas House District 16, featuring Linda Featherston and Richard Young. I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us today and remind you that today's forum has been recorded and it will be posted on the Policy Council's uh, website, site www.votejoco.com. Um, advanced voting by mail begins on October 14th and advanced in-person voting on October 19th with election day on November 3rd. Thank you again for joining us and have a good day.